stock market today analysis for Aloha Monday, March 20th, 2023. My friends, look at this. It is 7.53 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. I got home at 7 p.m. I went to work around 8 a.m. About an 11-hour workday for me. And that is okay for your good buddy Brent because I can sell cash-secured put options on stocks that I would be happy to own. Don't re- that doesn't really make sense? Well, it makes a lot of sense if you have uh, some sort of lifestyle that's similar to mine in regards of you're busy. You don't have time to sit around watching stock charts, even though it's super fun and you'd love to do it. Okay, maybe you don't think it's fun and maybe you wouldn't love to do it. But regardless, I think it's fun. And right here at the one minute mark, boom, it popped up. You saw it. That link gives you five reasons why you should be selling cash secured put options on stocks you would be happy to own probably one of those five is you can do other things besides trade and really it boils down to in 2023 if you have an internet connection you have a bank account and you spend money at least once a year you have no legitimate reason not to be doing this now you might have reasons but those are flipping excuses justifications, denials, rationalizations. Don't be that person. Be the better person. Be the better you. Don't be the worse you. Be the better you. All right, so if you want to learn how to do this, it's it's relatively easy to do, but it's not simple. There's definitely some complex moving parts to it, but you can totally figure it out. In fact, I can help you figure it out for free right here. YouTube playlist, five videos in there. Free downloads. Use the downloads in conjunction with the YouTube playlist. Everything right here. Free stuff. Go through the free stuff. If you want the paid stuff too, I'll help you. I'll personally hold your hand through this. Now, technically, I'm not going to hold your hand, but it's going to be it's going to be a a spiritual hand holding through, walking you through the valley of the markets. Speaking of the valley of the markets, oh. Look at this. Credit Swiss dies. Oh, man. But I thought Janet Yellen said that, um, you know, there's no banking contagion. That's why you got to understand that sometimes people say things that's not true. They might know it's not true or they just might be idiots. In this case, I don't think Janet Yellen is an idiot, but I never met her myself. Not sure. Yep. Credit Swiss collapses. And, uh, Signature Bank needs to be reorganized. First Republic Bank. Got some other top stuff in the news over here at this email per investing.com. Uh, just, uh, I don't know, the people over that we study markets, it was it was just getting to be too, uh, I don't know, too something. Like, I just want the data. I don't, I don't want the little blend of your narrative and social commentary on it of course unless i agree with it but if it's you know if it just seems to be catering to the powers that be i don't really like that crude oil lower dow jones nasdaq s p 500 weekly preview uh all eyes on the fed speaking of the fed look at this forex factories down my go-to website in the last couple weeks or months or whatever to to see what's going on really really clean way to look at it but there's other ways i could i could look at it and uh maybe i'll do that maybe i won't while i'm talking to you well we see we got mostly got green on this uh heat map here but we got some red and some big big spots um uh all 38 uh, declining almost 60 percent advancing look at this new lows man we, we are just we're just ripping these new lows here Below the 52, uh, uh, excuse me, below the 50-day moving average, almost 80%. 60, a little bit over 66% below the the um, uh, 200-day moving average. Let's see. Okay, what do we got in banks here? Okay, bank. Um, there. Oh, look at that. Disclose. Ah. <laughs> uh, this is old. This is old news. Yeah, it's March twentieth. But come on, come on. I learned about this about thirty years. I learned about this uh, 15, 20 years ago. Come on, where where you guys been? 
Investors faced three big questions. Rolling bank question, uh, or was it banking in there again? Banking in there again. Look at this. Uh, uh, Jamie Demon. Uh, oh, sorry, Diamond. Uh, banking in there again. I never met Jamie Jamie Demon before. Jamie Diamond. I don't really know if he's a demon. I, I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on with these people. But uh, we definitely got some banking crisis, and I, that just doesn't make sense. These people need to change the headlines because Janet Yellen said there's no problems. So this is something else you can check the latest insider trading. Any uh, any companies that I know out of this? There's there's probably more deeper detail you could you could uh, you could get into it. Let's just start looking at the markets. I'm having too good of a time here. We're looking at the futures. You gonna tr be trading these futures? I don't know, but let's check this out real quick. Look at this gold hit. Uh, gold broke over two thousand dollars today. Currently pulled back. Uh, excuse me. The gold futures contract price broke over two thousand dollars today it's currently pulled back to about 1986 and the changes is the, the the change is changing silver up here hitting some highs and uh bitcoin oh look at that almost up at thirty thousand. amazing uh maybe this is bitcoin futures i I'm, i gotta keep i gotta keep saying the right thing the futures price oh oh golly gee what's over here at the in the indices okay this is where we're at where with our current candle this is where we're at with our current candle current candle okay it's just warming up let's actually look at what shook out in the markets i haven't looked at this yet dollar look at this dollar's been all over the place up down up down up down uh volume just right in there but this is this is some wild moving movement in the volume now the 20-year treasury via TLT is bumping up against there. We already looked at gold. Do we look at oil? Okay, oil down here. We got this new trading range. The high still been up there at 80, but we definitely broke that uh, 72. Quite a few dollars below that. Seems like 65-ish is uh, is like the lowest that it that it got, and um, right in that 65-ish area. So so we're kind of uh seems like it's been wavering around. 66 on average 66 67 a couple times going down there towards 65 vix really just dropped down today um you know I, I several years ago maybe maybe going back to about 2012 i heard this little this rhyme when the vix is high you buy when the vix is low you go it's the volatility the fear index but um i i just i'm wondering if that is how accurate that is nowadays. Make us check this out. Pre uh, Chinese President Xi Ping. <laughs> hey, my Mandarin isn't isn't the greatest, right? I apologize about that. Ni hao ma, wu hen hao. Ni hao ma, hen hao. That's a bu hao, bu hao ma. I don't know. So I, I I do I do know just a little bit of Mandarin. I mean, barely. Barely enough. Like, I can't even hit on women in, in Mandarin yet. But uh, I can just ask how you doing and kind of know how to respond to that. And I know, like, uh, um, Kong Tiao, uh, Sai Tian, Shei Shei, you know, all, all these these little ones. But anyways, we got uh, Chinese president going over there to visit uh, uh, um, the Russian president. And last time I checked, as I said, I was really busy at work today, so I really didn't have time to check on what's going on with the war. But uh, last time I checked, there's a war going on, a proxy war, U.S. sending all types of weapons over there to fight China, or excuse me, fight Russia. But it seems like China and Russia are teaming up here. And so, and, you know, got all these banking problems going on. So why the heck is everybody feeling more confident that the VIX came down? I don't know. And uh, I don't know. So what, what do you have? SPX moved up today, but... Um, moved up today in uh in relation here we're like we're like riding that 200 day moving average over here in dow jones moved up today totally uh totally disregarded this candle right here but we're riding below that 200 day moving average nasdaq still trading in this kind of higher point definitely in the top 50 percent of this big bull candle up here uh, still above that 1250 that uh, whatever 1240 1250 is somewhere in there I guess 1250 is uh, more up here. 1240 ish, where it pivoted down here. And then uh, we're over here with the Russell 2000, looking on the low side. So, if this is kind of 
looks like a sideways move. This is kind of below. This is up. This is kind of below. We're probably going to grind it sideways just a bit. Anything stand out in the 12 sectors? 12 sectors. Okay. Uh, volume overall seems to be... Ooh, look at that. It's still excessive. Volume's kind of coming down for the majority of the sectors into normalizing. Healthcare, not looking not looking the greatest. It pulled back under this 200-day uh, moving average and uh, seems to be sort of going sideways right here. Our, our your, my, whoever, whoever, whoever is, uh, wherever we should put the possession of, uh, of the um, technology sector at, uh, our collective technology sector. You know, whatever the case may be, look, kind of looking like the NASDAQ. Banking fell apart over here, but is stabilizing here. It's probably short-term stabilizing because Janet Yellen said there's no problems. Why Why is it? I don't get it. Why Why? Why can't, you know, just the sentence that comes out of someone's mouth um, change reality? We, we would Sometimes we would like that, right? But it depends which sentence out of whose mouth and what. how is it changing the reality. Uh, industrials kind of looking eh, break down sideways above this 200 day moving average we're below this 200 day moving average in the sideways thing you see kind of hitting some uh, resistance right in there oh the retail breakdown going sideways sure, I'm just trying to try to, to get back up I maybe it was going sideways and breaking down more at the end of this range eh, looks like the XLU is having a hard time um, getting out above this little little peak in the W here, pulling back a little bit. Consumer staples under the 200-day moving average. Yep, energy pulled back, kind of going sideways. Let me quickly, as quick as, quick as I can, so it might not be, uh, maybe you like, maybe you like quick. All right, so S&P 500, I see see this like moving up here right you see that part moving up in here you know depends how far you look at it but moving down here seems seems to be pushing uh, if it keeps if it keeps um, if it keeps kind of squeezing and and I guess part of the subjectivity of doing this stuff is where do you start drawing these lines at <laughs> or is this right here you know is it right here is it pushing up here and you got going flat here. <laughs> so we'll kind of have to wait and see. What's that? Six months? Let's look at one year. All right. One year. Might be time to start taking off these uh, these lines right here. A little kind of looking a little confusing. But I'm not going to do that right at this moment. Okay, maybe I'll just do that right at this moment. Oh, we moved dry. There we go. All right. Goodbye. I really, I really kind of I'm sad to see those drawings, those drawings go. You know, because I had it on the line chart. But uh, what do we got going on here? Over a year, it just looks like overall our range is constricting, right? See how down, up, uh, but this down right here is less of a distance. As, excuse me, this up is less of a distance than this down, right? This movement from this pivot to this pivot is kind of around the same as this one here's a real small one right here and then this movement up right here which is definitely volatile seems to be is that the same distance as this or a little bit less now this one was definitely less this one is definitely less this from here to here seems to be less than here so it seems like we're kind of getting in this tighter range and sometimes when that happens it keeps it keeps um, uh, right. It's pushing. It's pushing down this way. If you think of a spring, you know, starting to wind this coil. If here's the coil, not not as tight. Now the coil is a little bit tighter. Now the coil is even tighter. Now the coil is even tighter. If it's flat over on this side, it can really bing bust out of there right because it's the pressure is coming over on this side but there's no pressure over here but okay so that's that would be one scenario if um when we see going to the upside here but what's happening to the downside 
let's look through a variety of stocks quickly mainly so I can uh, I can see what happened I'm move back over here to the six month why because I like to see these candles bigger I'm 46 you know come on give me a break eyes aren't what they used to be when I was 26 all right Apple Apple pushing up here to this uh, um, 157 area and uh, could be breaking out of this range but we see it hit up here before so we we have to watch to see what happens uh, with that all right it seems like uh, yeah, could be a definitely could be a breakout how about Microsoft how's Microsoft looking okay pulling back pulling back a little bit still in the top 50% of this big candle here not too surprisingly seeing we had a pivot right here with a little bit of resistance not too surprising to see it in there Amazon Amazon still overall like is below that 200 day moving average and we got a if you look at a high we got a lower high eh. meta meta starting to well uh, it's starting to climb right had this gapped up had this pullback over here bottomed out over here rose up to about here pulled back again now we're, now we're bumping up uh, over that I don't know if Facebook's still buying their own stock back and it's the it's a big um, you know eighth wonder of the world of why Google needs to be in here twice and uh, for some reason Securities and Exchange Commission did not call me up to discuss this so I'm waiting for your call Gary Gensler I'm waiting for your call so we can discuss this you know I need you to ask my input here but this in a way this chart right here in a way looks kind of like uh, what was that Amazon kind of reminds me of that Berkshire Hathaway uh, right here okay not surprising that we're getting caught up in this little bit of resistance or uh, that area right in there but look at this out of this trading range we're on the bottom of that right now um, just totally ignored this uh, bear candle right here kind of pop back up here Tesla yeah in a way also kind of reminds you of Amazon just sort of sort of basically sort of not looking like that uh, not looking like the the Facebook or the <laughs> Apple chart Nvidia there we go there's some there's looks uh, some more bullishness over there JP Morgan look at that for all this banking problem going on JP Morgan is bottoming out probably because uh, JP Morgan is buying up these distressed assets and uh, Jamie Demon might be orchestrating this stuff I mean Jamie Diamond maybe he's orchestrating this stuff I'm sure he's a smart cookie possibly working in conjunction with Janet Yellen even though that's not on the books you know what I found out I found out that sometimes people do stuff they're not supposed to do for example there was a young man under the age of 21 drinking alcohol this weekend can you believe that? And I was like, no, I couldn't believe it. I mean, the law says you got to be over 21. That's illegal. It's illegal to drink alcohol under the age of 21. But yet he was doing it. So if a 21-year-old uh, gentleman is going to do it, come on. Can't we expect some like people in their 40s or 50s that kind of run the banking institution to sometimes possibly do things that technically are illegal? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's not unreasonable to believe that someone might kind of do something to make more money that might not totally be illegal. No, I don't know if they are, aren't. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that just because something is illegal doesn't mean that people don't do it. PayPal. All right, PayPal kind of has that same little bit of look of uh, Amazon and Adobe. Adobe is starting to look a little better here. Better here. <laughs> And it seems like some of the tech stuff, maybe that's profitable tech, maybe not just the unprofitable tech, seems to be kind of coming up. I don't know if you call it Adobe. I don't know where that falls, but some of the semiconductors seem to be looking good. And why aren't we going through all these? Because um, the almost all of the top 10 of the, um, of the NASDAQ are basically the same as the top 10 of of the S&P 500 and they even have Google in here twice look at that all, all those same things another one Gary Gensler is not calling me up asking me Brent do you think it is a good idea or a bad idea that we have two indices 
allowed to have the same, almost the exact same top 10. The only difference is uh, what was over there, uh, Berkshire Hathaway and uh, JP Morgan Chase. Over here, we got PayPal and Adobe. And uh, I, I would tell Gary, look, this is the age of diversity and inclusion. No, no. I mean, this is not inclusive. This is all like white privilege over here. So you better change those stocks up. Now let's look at the Dow Jones. Boom! What's up with the Dow Jones? All right, below that 200-day moving average, looks like it's kind of creeping up. United United Health Group. And if I wasn't working 12 hours a day, I'd love to look at how to how to trade this. this some of these stocks in here, they got some great volatility. It's moving up. It's moving up on the day. It's moving. You got this little little thing probably hitting some resistance right in here. But overall. You see the trend has kind of been down. How about Goldman Sachs, which some people call government Sachs? And uh, we see here getting getting in, in here, but not too bad, you know, as the banking as the as the banks fall apart, you know, that's that's not too bad of a looking chart, right? It's done with <laughs> this big drop back right here. But I guess Janet Yellen getting out there and saying that everything's fine is uh you know convincing every people people that everything's fine. Now, when it comes to trading, sometimes you don't really know if people actually believe this or if they're just <laughs> reacting on what was said. So ultimately, we got to kind of play this interesting game when it comes to trading. And uh, not so much when it comes to investing, but when it comes to trading, sometimes you got to kind of you listen to what's said and then you kind of think about how is the market going to react to what's said, whether the market believes it or not. So... I hope that helps you. It definitely uh, helps keep me more sane is, is, uh, by understanding that um, just because something is supposed to be a certain way doesn't mean it actually plays out that way. But Home Depot, I was in, I've spent a couple hours in Home Depot today. And uh, uh, it, uh, what's going on with Home Depot here? Home Depot is, um, it's not surprising that it's getting caught in this, uh, in this area right here. But, uh, Microsoft already looked at that. Another one. No, no, no diversity. We need some more inclusion over here. And Salesforce, Salesforce kind of looks like, in a way, has that that not quite similar. But we got the gap up. We got the pullback, pulled back further than Meta, and uh, didn't rally up as high as Meta. Where Meta is like breaking out up here. But we got we got something similar over there in Salesforce. How about McDonald's? McDonald's still running the sideways, sideways campaign right right now. They, this is their side, their new sideways burger. You got a bun on top, you got a bun on the bottom, and you got some stuff in the middle there. Honeywell, Honeywell is not looking well overall. It just you can see this kind of steep incline down, but uh, hey, this is still up, uh, you know, above 150 bucks. So it's, it's a high price stock overall. I've never really checked out Honeywell's financials, but it's moving down just a little bit there. And then uh, Visa, as I've said so many times, what a great business model. I mean, what are they? What overhead do they really have? <clears throat> what cost to produce their products they really have? How much does it cost to make a plastic card? And you pretty soon they won't even have plastic cards anymore. And, you know, it's just going to be all, all like just an app. You know, they won't even have to produce a plastic card. <laughs> what, a, what a great business model. But it uh, seems to be catching some um, support right in through this area. Amgen. Amgen ah, starting to starting to go sideways a bit here after it had this long, this long uh, fall down. That's a good. This is a good picture of uh, of what could happen, I guess, if you if you learn how to go short via however you, you want to go short. And we got this uh, a Boeing going sideways over here. Definitely got a lot of. We got seems like the majority of our stocks continue to go sideways down and we got a couple going up but some of these couple that are going up are pretty big hitters in the indices so i think that the indices look better than what's possibly really happening happening in the totality of the stock market for example we still got this making all-time new lows but look at all this green over here doesn't that seem like it's not directly correlated here's all this green but there's all this red making new lows. So where's all this red at? All these below the 50 day moving averages, all these below, you got over half half of these stocks below the 50 day moving average, excuse me, the 200 day moving average. But where's all the red? I get it, maybe it's just like 
I don't, I, 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 I uh, it's not, it's not that I, what am I trying to point out here? What, I, well, I'm going back to, uh, what I was trying to point out is, is that, um, if you look at these indices, it gives you an idea of like what the market's doing, but it's not necessarily the most, uh, uh diversified thing. And, um, performance problem you know i'm 46 what do you expect you know at some age i just start having a performance problem i'm sorry ma'am all right just send it in just send the report come on there we go amc uh we got we definitely got a performance problem going here oh amc what's up amc you're continuing to go down uh don't short this there's there's you got to do something else with this you got some average true range in there all right don't short AMC. I don't, I don't. All right, this is this is just running really, really bad. So we're gonna wrap this up, and uh, maybe we'll. I, I do like looking at those stocks, but you know what? I got old Betsy here. Old old Betsy is just she's she's struggling over here. Look at that. Look at the struggle. The struggle is real. <laughs> the struggle is real. So. Let's see if we can look at this line chart. Oh, oh, goodness gracious. Look at that. No more, no more trend over here. Uh, boo. Boo how? Boo how ma? All right. So I can see it kind of tightening up, right? Uh, so it's gonna, it's gonna end up still in the sideways, sideways thing, right? We're st let's stick with, um, let's look at it like this. How long is it going to take to get back over 400? All right, how long? If, if never, it's probably not going to be never. But if it takes, if, if for the rest of the month, if it doesn't get over 400 and stay over 400, that's an indication of something. Because a couple weeks ago, I was talking to you about watching to see what's going to happen as it go, if, if it goes through. I was thinking it might go through 420 to 440, and I wanted to see what happened, how it went through it. What would it be like? Well, the very next week, what it did is start going the opposite way. And so that showed me what it was going to do through 420 and 440, which was nothing at this time. And so now we're, we're not really significantly under 400, right? Significantly maybe would be like, I don't know, 360, maybe we could consider significantly, maybe 370, but you know, we're like, we're like about seven bucks away from 400. So, you know, you figure between zero and 407, you know, that's kind of a small, small number. So let's see what happens, right? We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And then also we just want to be, be aware that, um, Possibly, you know, possibly like they're going to call it something different and the technicalities um, are definitely going to be different. But maybe we're entering into some sort of new time where there will be something that that could be argued and people could say, no, it's not quantitative easing because ABC, XYZ, and they would they would factually be right. Whatever fancy name is going to be put on it is it going to cause the stock market to do this hey qe by any other name with this result is still the same right is it going to bring us out of the sideways chop is it going to bring out out of here which we kind of sort of been in in that range is it going to bring us out of there and is it going to go up here so you know, do you really care if it's quantitative easing or operation twist or whatever, whatever um, baloney name they want to put on it? No, oh, maybe you do. I don't. So we want to be aware of that. And, and um, why do we want to be aware of that is because since this banking stuff happen, happen um, the balance sheet, the Fed's balance sheet, Fed federal federal reserves balance sheet is been going up what is not just what does that mean but like what what is that well 
When they're doing this stuff, quantitative easing, guess what happens to the Federal Reserve's balance sheet? It goes up. And then there's quantitative tightening. That's when the balance sheet goes down. Raising interest rates, not giving, uh, not doing uh, covert, weirdly named things that most people don't understand that ultimately puts money into Jamie Dimon's hands and allows the stock market to go up. <laughs> not doing that kind of brings the stock market down. Because we're not living in the 1980s anymore. <laughs> oh, we're not. We're not living in the 1980s anymore. The stock market is not in the 1980s anymore. This is the 2023 stock market. And things move up and down based on what the yahoos over at the Federal Reserve are doing in conjunction of the yahoos at these different banks and these tech firms and all this type of stuff, share buybacks, all these variety of things. So what are you going to do? What should you do about it? Oh, man, what, what are you going to do? Should you throw up your arms and say, oh, oh, it's it's not like what they taught me in high school. So I'm so upset. We got to change the system. Oh, you can do that if you want to. But what I'm suggesting is do whatever you're normally doing. You got a couple kids, raise your kids, sell some cash secure put options on stocks you don't mind owning. Just understand that um, that uh, you know, things aren't necessarily the same. You know, in the, in the 1980s, you had cars that maybe went a certain speed, and that was kind of top. And probably in 2023s, you probably could have cars that can go faster. Right? It's not the 1950s anymore. So just realize it's not the 1950s anymore. It's 2023. You got an internet connection. There was no internet connection in 2020 in 1950s. There wasn't one in the night in 1980s. Right? You probably had a bank account, and, and, and people probably had bank accounts in the 1980s. They had bank accounts in the 1950s. People are spending 19, in the 1950s. People are spending money in the 1980s. People are spending money in 2023. You're still spending money. You're probably doing it more than once a year. So what do you got to lose to learn how to do this? What do you have to lose? I tell you what you have to lose. Your bad habits in your, your worst self. If you're in love with your bad habits and you want to be the, the the worst version of you, hey, stick with it. More power to you. That's your choice. But if you want to, to lose some bad habits, gain some good habits, and you want to do your best to bring out, bring out the best version of you, if you don't know how to do this, learn it. You guys have a fantastic day. I hope this is still recording. <laughs> Aloha.